it's interesting what Ronnie was saying, but it's it's amazing with Kenny if, is that if the pressure was too great, I mean, if he was losing it, he was questioning himself, as he's already said. Mm -hmm. And if it was the end of the road for him and he felt that way, one's got to respect his decision, even though it is the middle of February and not May, as everybody would like it to be. Well, yeah. pe pe people want him to go on simply for... for because they want, Liverpool fans obviously want to see the club carry on, stay yeah. at the top and stay in the cup, but if things were caving in on him, that's right. as obviously they yeah. have been, Jimmy, that's, then that's right. I think he's quite entitled to say enough's enough. I, I think absolutely, I, and, and I think he's made the right decision if that's how he feels. I mean, he has been under enormous pressure, he, he must have been, to have made the decision, particularly, as we say, in the middle of February, but I'm sure it's the right decision in the context of, of, of how he's made it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, see, John Barnes was saying that he's a very private person, and we know that uh, yes, from our dealings yeah. with the media with him. Yeah. I mean, he keeps everything to himself, and that is maybe the problem, Jim. I think yeah. some managers are very outgoing, they're very That's chatty, right. they, they, mm. they like to talk, I, I, Kenny didn't. Kenny always found it very difficult to deal with the media, we know that. He, he found it difficult to handle people like you and I who have been in the game. It was always a difficult one for him, and I'm sure that added to his pressure, definitely. Well, let's look at the, the kind candidates mm. um, that have been put forward. The Ronnie Man yeah. an obvious, obvious choice, yeah. been at the club all that time. I, don't, mm. I mean, you know, Bob Paisley didn't want the job after Shanks and became the most successful right. manager ever, so maybe Ronnie could do the same. Oh. Phil Thompson looks after the reserves. That's right. Alan Hansen, who we understand Kenny favours a little bit, doesn't he? Kenny yes, he does. Well, Big Alan, uh, you know, I think was going to stay in the game anyway, you know, yeah. and uh, maybe on the coaching side or whatever. And he's, he's very affable, big fella, knows yeah. the game as well. So, I mean, that wouldn't be a bad choice no. from within the club. No, it's a fair choice. Now, the, of the others, yeah, John Toshak, I, I was speaking to uh, last night over in Spain. Yeah, he's there. 10 to 1. Yes, now the Tosh said he wouldn't close the door on, on, no. um, on talking to Liverpool, no. but there's a little problem there that Sociedad have offered him a, a, a contract starting in June yeah. and he's accepted that for five years so he said that could yeah. be a slight problem but not insurmountable. Yeah. Phil Neal has done very well at Bolton. He has. He's at 12 to 1. Then there's Glyn Hussain at 50,000 to 1 and Saddam <laughs> Hussain at 50 million to 1. And, <laughs> and, and of course you must remember that there's Emlyn Hughes, you know. In the background. In the background. Yeah. Don't know how far. Whatever harm is, let, let us just say here, Jim, I think that, that we, we would like Kenny to enjoy his retirement for how long it takes. Get out in the golf course, Kenny, and get away from the pressures of all. I, I, I think that's it. Don't call it retirement because, you know, maybe he'll want to come back. But there's one important question. Who's going to get Kenny's anorak? <laughs> I'll get him to send, send it on to you, Joe. Right, time, time for some action now as we catch up on some of the top league fixtures this week. We feature Sheffield Wednesday in part two, but here with the other action is Mark Tyler.